Hello, my name is Peter Stanton. I own a company called Edge Precision Metal Products in Houston, Texas. And it used to be a lot bigger company, and I sold the assets of the company about eight years ago. The, and we had probably, oh, 22 to 23 pieces of CNC equipment there, and we had about 45 people working there. We did work predominantly for the petrochemical industry. And since I've sold the shop, the people that own it now asked me to do some work for them and actually rent space in their facility. And I have a couple of big pieces of CNC equipment I work on pretty much by myself. And a uh, uh, CNC tool and cutter grinder and a, a wire EDM and a coordinate measuring machine are the major pieces of equipment that I have over there. In the garage here, I have a, a behind me, there's a little Haas a milling machine, and then off to my right that you can't see, but you'll see later in the videos, is a, a little uh, Haas CNC lathe that I purchased when I sold the company and I put them in my garage. And I do little jobs on these. So what I want to attempt to do with these videos is to show people maybe just getting started with this how you go about doing it really you know how you set the machine up how you uh, touch tools off set fixture offsets and do various things like that and so what I thought we could do is I, I made this milling stop like this oh I don't know how many I know I made it before the space shuttle Challenger um, blew up on takeoff because I was working at the shop at a shop then and we were doing NASA work and I remember that so that's been oh I don't know at least 30 years ago and I don't know if I was the first one to do this but this version of it's worked real good for us it's real rigid and strong and and I would like to make more of them I, I didn't make this one then I've made some sense but um, I think the parts in this could be good exercise for you know, learning how to machine things, they're pretty simple parts, so they won't be difficult to machine. And uh, um, I think it would be, you know, show a lot of good uh, exercises for somebody maybe just getting started with this kind of thing on how to go about doing it. So what we're going to start with is pretty much the simplest part on this assembly, which is just one of these pins right here. And in the lathe, we're just going to face the ends of it off so that we've got smooth ends. Right now, they're saw cut oh, an eighth of an inch longer than they need to be. And we're just going to face them to length to get a good, nice surface on there and, and bring the dimension to length. And I think that'll be, a, you know, the program will be real simple, just face cuts and a little chamfer. And so we won't be bogged down with all this you know, complicated programming, and we'll be focusing more on setting the machine up to do this simple operation and getting this part ready to go to the milling machine. And ultimately, we we'll go to the mill. We'll have a, a much more complex um, setup on the mill as we progress. The complexity will get greater and greater. So, and hopefully, it won't be too complicated in the beginning to where somebody just getting started can't understand what's happening. So, you know, let's get started making this pin and we'll see how it goes. Okay, okay uh, let's talk about the general configurations of uh, machine tools to get an idea of what we need to know when we program. Basically, you have, well, we'll talk about the coordinate systems first. You have a, the Z axis. And then you have an x-axis and a y-axis. So the plus directions. Now this will be a, sort of a configuration for your normal milling machine, like a Bridgeport mill, a vertical machining center, etc. Something like that. On, on your uh, engine lathe, the z-axis is going to be the spindle 
and the X is your cross line. But to program this doesn't really make sense because that puts your Y axis pointing down like this. If you just rotate this around to here. So normally on most CNC machines you want to program with your X plus on the lathe and your Z plus going away from the spindle like that which rotates your Y if you have a Y axis on a CNC machine lathe the Y plus pointing towards you the operator of the machine but you, you program the part, you know, say you have a part like this of some sort, you program it like that in, in the X and Z plane on the lathe. So this makes it the X going, the plus going up. If you, if you use this coordinate system, it would be kind of more confusing because you're going to have the Z and the X pointing down this way. In X plus here and the Z plus here but you could program this way but it um, it's gonna be confusing because your plus directions going downward on your program so no matter the configuration of the machine even though this is the way uh, some flatbed lays or most flatbed lays are like an engine lathe or something like that or even this little CNC lathe I have in the garage you generally program visualizing the X plus going upward on your program so it just makes it easier to visualize even though the the tool is actually coming in from this direction on the real machine so that's usually the way you do it on a lathe and if the lathe has a Y axis like some lathes do then the the Y plus actually comes out towards you which uh, even makes it more confusing when you jog the machine around because it's the opposite of the way you jog a normal uh, vertical mill which has a Y going away from the operator the operator would be standing over here in the machine so the X plus would be to the right the Y plus is away from him and the Z plus is upward the spindle of the machine so also if you have rotary axes on the on the machine tool the a rotation around the x-axis is always considered A normally. Some machine manufacturers change this around but this is the normal way it should be. An, a rotary axis that rotates around the y is considered a B-axis and, and a rotary axis that rotates around the z is considered a C-axis like that. You can also have linear axes that are parallel to the X, Y, and Z axis, which are called U, V, and W. So X, Y, Z, A, B, C. You see that you see the correlation there? X, Y, Z, U, V, W, A, B, C these things you kind of need to understand in order to visualize the way you're going to program your machines. It's not really complicated but it's just kind of easier to understand what you're doing if you understand these things. Okay the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this to just saw cut on the ends. We're going to put it in the lathe and we're going to face it to length. Right now it's about two inches seventy thousandths long. They're saw cut to that length. We got to bring them to. Uh, actually, I got to look at the drawing. I think it's about one, yeah, one and seven eighths long. Is the finished is the finished length of the part. So, and there was going to have a little. Uh, Maybe a 20,000 chamfer on, on the OD when it's done facing the length. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the machine and then we're going to get into the programming a little bit. Show you what 
we have to do there, and then we're going to run it. First thing we're going to do, setting this machine up, first I'm going to put this machine into a manual mode. On, on uh, the Haas blade, you can manually crank the handles on it. I'm just going to show you what the setup is, basically. It's the, we got the 5C collet chuck here, bolted onto the spindle, and we got a 1 inch 5C collet with a collet stop in it. And this is a blank of material. I've, I've already faced it a little bit so we can establish a Z um, zero. Just skimmed it just a little bit by hand. See the part measures two inches, 51 thousandths. We're going to need to know that number to set the zero point in Z. So we can put this back. The, the, we're, just, we're not going to turn the OD. This is going to be just the raw stocks OD. And we're just going to face the ends to lengthen cham put a little chamfer on there. So we push it back against the stop, clamp the collet, and uh, this tool, this is tool number one on this, on my tool setup, and the, the Z offset of the face of this tool is set to zero, so this is my reference tool, we'll call it, and everything, every other tool follows the reference tool, so in order to set my zero, on my fixture offset, I need to have the machine understand that tool number one is, you know, there and ready to machine. On this machine, because you make manual tool changes, you have to tell it that that tool's in the cutting position, if you will. On machines with turrets, you would index the turret and it would automatically know that that tool is, is ready there. So what we got to do is manually bring this tool up in this case and we'll just touch the face of the part. And then we got to go over to the control and we got to go to our offset page for the tool offset, the fixture offsets I should say. So if we keep pushing this offset button down here. We come to this page and we're going to set this Z as you can see right here of G54. It's already uh, happens to be on there. So you're going to put the cursor on the G54Z position. And on the Haas control, they have a little button that says Z face measure. You push that, it calculates the number for you. Some controls, you have to do this differently. Um, we're not going to get into that right now, but just for this one, you just got to push one button. But now we know that that's 175 thousandths out too far from our actual length we want our pin to be, right? So we got to set it, we got to subtract another uh, 175 thousandths from this number here, which is going to be like, we're going to add minus 0.175. If you can see that down here in the lower corner of the screen. And on, on this control, the Haas machine, you just push right or enter, and it adds that number to the other number, like that. So that's all we got to do to set the Z0 on um, setting the diameter of the tool. This tool's already set, but I can go through it with you just so you can see it being done. We got to take a little bit of a cut on the, on the part. Because the machine knows tool one's in the spindle, we can do this. You have to make sure the machine knows what tool you're doing this with. Um, if we go to the offset page for this tool, we can see that the cursor is on tool one, so it, it knows that tool one is there, so we can set this offset in X here. So first we've got to take a little bit of a cut on the part. So I'll turn the spindle on, and we'll come over here. I'm going to take just a, a little skim cut on the part here, just to... It, we're going to machine this much off of it anyway, so it's not going to hurt. And don't move it in the x-axis. Once you get this set, you take your little cut, or the cross, the cross slide axis, this axis, don't move it. Just back it up this way, in the z-axis, and then stop the spindle here. And then get out something and measure the diameter. I'm just going to do it with calipers here because we're not working to that close a tolerance in this case. And we got like uh, 999 thousandths, basically, a thousandth under one inch. So we've got to come back over here to our offset page. 
I'm gonna hit reset to stop that noise you're hearing. And when I push this X diameter measure button on this control, you're gonna see this number change. Okay, so, and then we gotta enter down here the, the diameter, it says enter the diameter that you just measured. And when we push input, this number here is gonna come back to the offset number. And when you, you make those offset settings, and you really don't change them from now on, what you'll do is you'll change where settings, which will be here. This is tool number one, where in X, where in Z, and the where in the radius. And what the radius is, is of course the tip radius of the tool, which is set here already at 30 thousandths, because this tool's already been set up actually. And over here on this tip number, this is the direction of compensation if you're using tip comp on the lathe. Um, we're gonna get into that in a little bit more detailed explanation here in a minute, so I'm just gonna leave it right now that that's what that is on that. I'm not exactly sure what Haas uses this tapered setting for. I never used it before. I'd have to go to the manual and look it up, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't think it's even necessary, but I'm, I'm not sure what that's for, right? I couldn't tell you right off the top of my head. Of course, the Z is set on zero on this tool because it's a reference tool. And all these other offsets below here are for tools that I've already used. On, on this machine. So now we're going to make a program basically to do this little face cut. So I'm going to move I'm going to move the camera the GoPro camera I think over here so you can see if I can get it to work that way so you can see what I'm doing on the controls keyboard and uh, and we're going to leave the other camera on the on the display if we can do all this. Let's see if we can do it here. So you can see what's happening with things. I'm gonna have to go around the other side for a second here. make this work. Okay, to make a program, you got to go to the program list. I've already started one here, but I'm going to erase this and start over again so you can see what happens. I need to select a number that's not being used here. So, um, 58 is not being used. So, typical program names for CNC controls are going to start with an O. It's just a format that everybody seems to use. And then we got to put a 58 push input. That gives us a program number, but it's only just an empty program right at the moment. So we got to go to the edit mode. And we're going to name this program. So let me back up here. Anything in closed, open and closed parentheses in a program, the, pro, the machine ignores it. You can put notes in your program. It's kind of good to do this you know, so that you can understand what's happening in the program or, or right now we're just going to give it a name basically. That's all we need to do here. So we got to have an open parenthesis and we're going to call this, um, let's call it mill stop, uh, where's it? Stop, S-T-O-P, pin. Okay, we'll just call it that right now. And then a closed close parenthesis and then you push in the insert key here, and that inserts it in the spot where the cursor is, based, or right after the cursor's position. So then we, we want to get to the end of block character here. So we push end of block and arrow down. Now anything we insert is going to go on the next line. End of block on a CNC program designates the end of the line, basically, or they call them blocks. Each line is a block in a program. So the end of block character. So now we want to change to tool one. So on the on this machine, all you got to put is tool one T1 end of block, and it's gonna um, 
start beeping basically and, and, and ask you to put tool one in the, in the tool post. This machine, you manually change tools so it doesn't know what tool is there by indexing a turret or something like that. If, if it was that type of machine, you'd have to put an M6 on that line. And, and also this one pretty much brings the offset with the tool so you don't even have to really call an offset so we're not going to do that but usually on the next line in the program you would call a, an offset for the tool on most controls and this machine doesn't require you to do that in this case so we're not going to do it but what we're going to the next line we're going to tell it what fixture offset we're using so that's a G54 right that's the one we set end of block and then we got to wrap it down close to the part somewhere. So a G00 is a rapid move. And we're going to go X1.05, that's inch and 50 thousandths. And we're going to go Z.2 and a block, like that. That's just an initial rapid move to get it down close to the stop. Now we have to turn the spindle on. And on a, on a lathe, you typically use constant surface footage in, in um, spindle commands. You don't have to, but on a facing cut, it would be nice because as it goes down the facing cut, it's going to speed the spindle up as it gets closer to the center to try to keep the surface footage the same of whatever you've commanded it to do. And in this case, we're going to go, it's going to be running wide open anyway. This machine only goes to 1800 RPM. And we're pretty much going to run the whole program at 1800 RPM, but just for the sake of it, I'm just going to show you what the commands are. You would, the um, M3 is to turn the spindle on in the forward direction, which is usually what all right-hand tools, which is what this is, take to cut. It's going to be turning, if you're facing the spindle, that's going to be turning counterclockwise. And um, G96, is uh, calling for constant surface footage. So this is going to turn the spindle on. G96 is going to tell it how fast to go. And the next command is going to tell it how fast. We're going to go S, um, we'll say 450, okay? And the block. Now this, this S of 450 is not the spindle speed in RPM. It's the constant surface footage speed based on the diameter that it's cutting. So as it goes smaller in diameter, if this machine was capable of it, it would speed the RPM up to its maximum RPM right in the center of this part. Um, but that's probably going to run almost full speed on this machine anyway, because it only does 1800 RPM. So now we got to decide where we want to cut, basically. So we're going to face the first side. We want to leave a little stock on the back side, right? So we've got 175 thousandths of stock to take off for both ends. So if we, if we take more or less half of that, uh, 175, it's going to be 87 thousandths. So we want to take one rough cut down the face of this thing. So we're going to move in G O O to Z. Um, what 175 minus 0 0.080, we'll say, 90 to 95 thousandths in front of our Z0. And that just rapids the machine right up in there. But we're at 1 inch 50 thousandths, so we're not going to hit anything. Then we're going to go G01, which is a feeding move, a linear feed movement. And we're going to go to X minus 0 0.060. And the reason we're going to minus 60 thousandths in X, we want to get the end of the tip radius of the tool to zero. So we have to go down that far. And the tool has a 30 thousandths tip radius, but remember that we're dealing with diameter here, so we got to go twice that to get to the end of the radius of the tool. Okay, and then we have to have a feed. If you don't put a feed on a G01, or move the first one in, in a, a tool, it's going to give you an alarm. So you got to have a feed. And this is going to be in inches per revolution on a lathe. Okay? So it's 0 0.01, we'll say 10 thousandths of an inch per revolution, and a block, insert. Then we're going to wrap it back out 
to our point two to clear the part and we're going to come back up to x.0 oh, excuse me x1.05 right that's where we started right there now we're going to make a finish cut on the end of that part but our finish cut we want to have a chamfer on it right so we got to do a little bit of calculation here or thinking about this we want say we want a chamfer of 20 thousandths of an inch so we got to take 1.0 minus 0.040 thousandths twice because we're dealing with diameter equals 90, 960 thousandths okay so we, we need to make that's going to be where our, our face cut actually starts the chamfer is going to be in front of that so let's get a get a little piece of paper and kind of draw this draw this out so you can kind of see what's happening here maybe be easier um, we got our stock say we got our stock here like this it's our center line and we want to cut a chamfer and we want to come down here and move the tool out right so we, we got to have a lead in. We're going to use tip compensation for this cut. The, the rough cut didn't matter. You're just roughing it off. But this cut, because the tool's coming down an angle, we're going to use tip comp. And it's going down this angle, I mean this face, down to here. So we got to figure out where this is going to be. If this is on the diameter is 960 thousandths here, and this is 20 thousandths, here this is obviously going to be another 20 thousandths in Z and let's go up another 20 here just to have a little clearance on the part so this is going to be a 40, 1 inch 40 thousandths right and this Z depth is going to be our 20 plus 20 is going to be minus 0 0.040 and if we come back here we got our lead in movement has to be at least the radius of the tool preferably so we got to come back this little triangle here is a 45 degree triangle so if this is 0.0 we'll make it we'll make it 40 thousandths both directions right so that's 40 and that's 40 this is going to be actually at z0 here z0 and this is going to be another 40 thousandths which is 80 thousandths on the diameter from here, right? So that's going to be 1 inch 40 thousandths plus 80 thousandths, right? I got to use a calculator to make sure I get this right. Okay, so that's going to be 1.120 diameter. So, actually, we probably ought to change this number right here to X. 1.120 and we push the alter key to alter that so we're at the right diameter then we're going to go uh, to z minus oh we're, we're actually we got to just go to z zero like that now once you um once you give a goo command it's what they call a modal command and it and you don't need to give it on every line you just need to as long as you don't change your feed mode you can just start entering numbers in now a lot of some people use um, n sequence numbers on their programs and you could do that which they put an n sequence number in front of every line so they can search down the program and find it this is such a simple program we're not going to do any n sequence numbers in fact I normally don't use them at all except for specific locations to go to because it just uses up more memory in the control and in some cases can actually slow the machine down if you have uh, if you have high feed rates and everything so we're not going to worry about end sequence numbers but there's nothing wrong with using them uh, I don't typically do it on a lot of my programs except in specific locations where I want to search for a tool or or if you have a roughing cycle on the lathe you need to use them but in this program we don't have that so we're, we're just not going to worry about it right now um, so we're at Z0 we want to um, cut our profile here. So right now we're sitting, we're sitting right at this point here, and we're going to move over to here. 
but on this line we're going to apply our tip compensation. Now there's G40 is no tip comp or cancellation of tip comp. G41 is left hand tip comp and G42 is right hand tip comp. In this case, if you visualize your the you know you're traveling down this line like say you were just walking down this line yourself and you're traveling this direction what side would you be on the line well obviously you'd be on the left hand side of this line if you were just visualize yourself walking down the contour right so in this case we're going to use G41 which is left hand tip comp so right now we're going to put a G01 for telling it it's in a feed mode and we're going to put a, a G41 putting it in the left hand compensation and then we're going to put in our X and Z numbers we're going to go X 1.040 Z minus um, 0.040 right like that so that's going to bring the tip radius of the tool basically right to here. I'm going to explain this in more detail. But for right now that's good enough for us to get going here. And then, then the next dimension we're going to enter is this 0.960 in X. Okay, 0.960 and Z of zero, right? I'm going to come back to um, how to put the X on there. 0.960 and then Z I don't know if I'm standing in front of the zero point. And uh, see right here, I left something out on the GO1 line. Catch that. If you don't have a feed rate, it's going to give you an alarm. So I need, or it would use the last feed rate program, which in this case was 10 thousandths of an inch. Well, that's kind of fast for a finish cut. So let's go um, a feed of 0.004, let's say. We got to insert it here before the end of block. Okay, now we're feeding down the line to uh, this point, which is Z0. Now we got to come down in X, X minus 0 0.060, end of block. And then we got to go G O O to Z. Well, we're going to actually cancel cutter comp here. So G O O G, or tip comp in this case. G40 is a cancellation of tip comp, and we're going to go Z.2. It's going to bring us back out in front of the part in a clearance move. Then we're going to go X 1.25. We'll just get it out here in X. And then we're going to turn off the spindle. M05 turns off the spindle. And then we going to go G O O to X 6.0 Z 6.0 the block. That's going to um, bring our tool out to a clearance position so we can take the part out of the collet and rotate it around. Okay, And then we're going to go on M O O that is a program stop, an M O O. Okay, and then basically we're going to do the same thing all over again right here. You know, one thing I did, I can see right now, is I made a mistake, is that I've, I've actually faced this off to the um, finished dimensions of the part, right? So what, what we got to do on this machine, I think we can copy all this here. And then uh, I think if you push input here, it puts it there. So that's um, basically our finished end of the part, right? So what we want to do, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be actually the end of the program is an M30 alter. That's rewind the program or, or rewind it to the top of the program is what the M30 stands for. It's actually a holdover from the old paper tape days when you would actually have to rewind the tape. 
but uh, they just kept the command the same even though you, you don't have any tape paper tapes or anything like that anymore or tape readers but that's what the M30 command it means rewind actually which meant rewind the tape it's just never been changed you can put an an MO2 at the end of the program which would just stop the machine right there and it wouldn't reset the program to the beginning so now basically we want to change all of the Z's on this first cut to allow some stock on the back side right so let's go down here again I didn't I didn't do this exactly right now that I'm thinking about it well I did the first pass right but the second ones I gotta, I gotta add, I think we want to be about 80, we're going to have to change this down further, this 95 to something different, but in this case here we gotta add, we're gonna go Z.080, okay? So we're gonna add 80 thousandths to all our Z dimensions, so minus um, 0.080 minus 0.040 would be 40 thousandths Z 0.040 alter and we gotta go Z 0.080 on that one and we gotta go da 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 down here okay so that's that looks like that probably corrected that. And then after we our MOO, we got to go, our Z has got to be um, maybe 10 thousandths we'll leave for the finish cut in this case. So if I've done everything right here, I don't know if I have, we can actually see this on the graphics. And we'll zoom in on this a little bit. Here, I don't know if I'm standing in front of the camera. Here, um, this will show the program, and I think this, uh, this one, F3, and we want to show uh, Let's just run it once to see where we're at here. Okay. Yeah, that looks sort of right, but let me, uh, I was trying to get this. Okay, this is on the work now, here. This is the first cut and the second cut. And that should bring us to length. We can put this in single block on here. We can watch it so we can see where we're at. So we're at 95 thousandths in Z. Come down, back up, and we go over to our start point of our, uh, to add to a, for tip comp, come over, and then down this way. And see we're at our 80 thousandths in Z. We face the part down, come out and out to our MOO at six inches and six inches. We come back and we go to 10 thousandths in Z. So the, after we've turned the part around, out. And then we go to our, where we apply tip comp again and we go back to that dimension. This looks kind of funny because it's applied the tip comp to the radius of the tool. It comes down to Z zero and down to the middle of the part and back. We actually are coming too far in X here. We could change that a little bit. We don't need to go but 60 thousandths beyond. In, the, in reality, when you have um, tip comp on here, on these finish cuts, I'm just gonna go to X minus 10 thousandths on these because the tip comp will actually bring the tool down beyond. On both of those. 
Let's see what that did. Okay, there's our roughing pass. See, it comes down to 60 thousandths, or we're very close to it there, minus. And then our finish cut now comes down to the same position, or a little bit 10 thousandths beyond, like I programmed, because of, because of the tip compensation. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Only way we'll know is if we run it now. So let me move the GoPro camera over here. Sort of get it positioned so we can kind of see what's happening here. this thing one time and see what happens. So we're going to put it into the memory mode. It's already in the memory mode. We're going to put it in the current command screen. It was in the graphics display so the machine doesn't actually run when it's showing the graphics. And uh, I'm going to take single block off. I'm going to slow the rapid rate down oh, to 25% right here. I'm going to push cycle start the machine's going to come up to the one inch fifty thousand. Takes the that was a roughing pass. And then here's our finished pass. Where the rapid slowed down. That's why it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So then we're going to take the part out of the chuck or the collet. And we're going to flip it around, push it back in, chuck onto it, push cycle start. I'll put it on 100%. Okay, and that's it, basically. Let's see if uh, we came out close to the length we wanted here. Okay, see it's, um, I don't know if you can see that there, it's three thousandths long. Well in this case, that's no big deal, but we're going to tweak it a little bit. We're going to come over here to our offset, I'm going to go minus 0.003 input, that's set at three thousandths in. Okay, we're going to put another part in here, I'm going to try it again. Back to make sure we're in the memory mode here. Okay, first side. Get the part around. Second side. Now because of the nature of Collets, 5C collets and such. If the stock, if the stock varies slightly in diameter, the um, the length will vary slightly in diameter. That's just the nature of collet work. So, see what we did here. So, see we're we're pretty much right on the money here now, close enough for what this part does. So now we just got to put all these parts in here and. and base them off the length. Basically that's all there is to this particular setup. This is just preparing this for the um, the milling operation. And that's all there is to it.